Hi, welcome back to the doctor's office. I am Dr. K. Ray Knight, and I am here to give you the proper diagnosis and prognosis in everything comics and comic book characters. Now, I was looking through your patient history, and I see that you were diagnosed with BSS. BSS is Boring Storyline Syndrome. Don't worry, it's not fatal. And I do have something for you. It is going to come in four parts, comes all the way from the DC Comics Pharmacy, and it's known as Kingdom Come. I'm sure you're wondering, what is this and what are the side effects? So the only side effects that I can see pertaining to you would be fear of failure, superhuman manipulation, lots of talking, the mindset that war is the only answer, Wonder Woman is a bad guy, and sarcasm. But don't worry, once you take all four doses, I think that you will really love this medication. So I will explain every single dose to you, so all four doses. I'll give you my opinion overall, and you let me know if it is the right medication for you. So let's get into what the doctors ordered. Let's get into the first dose, which we're going to call Humanity Lost. Essentially, in this first one, we are introduced to a man named Wesley Dodd, who was the Sandman back in the golden ages of superheroes. And he's talking to his friend Norman, who is a pastor. Norman just kind of thinks that he's crazy. And even after uh, Wesley dies, he talks about Wesley um, having all of these stories and things like that as if almost as if Wesley was lying. Um, but indeed, Wesley was a superhero. He was Sandman. Uh, going forward, he basically passes on his prophetic dream powers to Norman um, without Norman really realizing it. And Norman can't really handle it. At this point in time where we are in this on this earth, the superheroes who are here are the younger generation they are the children and grandchildren of the previous generations and they are running absolutely rampant and you can tell that where they are it seems very normal for them to just be fighting in the street uh, because Norman is walking like it's just a regular fucking Tuesday and he just so happens to save a little girl who's about to get crushed by a light pole but um, he just continues walking you know what I mean? Apparently it when it is implied in this first book that something tragic has happened and Superman has abandoned humanity and humanity is just at the mercy of these superhuman people. And we then see Diana go to Superman to try to talk to him. And she very, very intentionally tries to avoid calling him Clark. Uh, you see her try a couple of times, like she starts off saying his name and then changes it to Cal. Um, we'll get to that later. She starts trying to get him to come back to understand. We see where everybody is. So, you know, Wonder Woman is trying to get him. He has isolated himself in his Fortress of Solitude. Flash and Batman have essentially kind of worked together to keep their cities like under control. Um, and he does kind of mention later on when he goes to talk to Bruce that it looks like a police state because it does. Batman has his bat robots everywhere handling the crime. Batman looks like he may have been like injured his whole body because he's like in a big huge body like a moving body cast. Mind you it's been 10 years. I'm not really sure 10 years from where because they are all extremely old except for Diana. Like even when it comes to Oliver Queen and Black Canary like they are mad old so she very much is trying to convince him and you know she he says you know i'm superman i can do anything and she's like apparently except face your fear and he's like i'm not afraid of him she's like i'm not saying that you are i'm saying that the fear of what is to like what is becoming of this world is what's keeping you away then he goes into their humans humans die and you know that and she's like they weren't just humans, they were your family and like your parents and your wife. Like you can't just say that. We get 
backstory but not really backstory green lantern is up in his emerald castle kind of just looking down at everybody everybody is very much separated and superman removed himself from a situation it doesn't really say what the situation is um and then the younger generation of heroes is taken over so then we get to the part where we see him going to go check what's happening at the behest of diana and magog who is the basically leader of this younger generation of heroes and has taken captain adam and like four other people to go up against this this little person called parasite and they are ganging up on him he touches captain adam and rips open captain adam's shell which causes captain adam to explode and not only kill the other people there minus magog and maybe one other person but a million people over four states and even then superman does not budge then we kind of flash back to Norman who has like this prophetic dream about Superman um, and it is important to note that the prophetic dreams passed on from him uh, to him from Sandman are of crimes so it's like cryptic crimes so it's very important to note that and Norman is now about to start traveling or Norman is traveling around with the Spectre who just He's like, I'm here to watch. So, you know. This leads us into our second dose and we're going to call this Blame and Burden. So in this one, we see that Superman and Batman are now having a conversation and it is quite literally just a conversation of pettiness and sarcasm. And it is very interesting, the, the jabs that they take at each other. However, the person that comes out in the right in this is Batman. Superman does go there to like he has like decided to come back at the end of book one he does come back and you know he's ready to assist and so he goes to Batman for help because of course they're friends so you know he wanted to talk and Batman wasn't trying to hear any of that Batman was not having it so we also get background of exactly what happened and basically what happened was the Joker went to the Daily Planet and murdered everybody there including Lois and superman due to his moral code wanted to have the joker arrested and tried um, however magog was like no and killed him in front of everybody so superman was like you need to be tried so magog is on trial but he gets acquitted because the people decided that he was correct and that that villains like this need to be dealt with properly and jail is not the answer that was when superman ended up leaving and so bruce makes several several good points first of all the pettiness continues where he refuses to call um superman cal he calls him clark to remind him that you spent your life as a human you had a human family you were married to a human woman you have humanity in you and i'm not about to call you your fucking alien name because you're bad so that conversation he was like you know you're just making this a police state and he was like my city is basically running like a little world machine and metropolis is a fucking war zone because you left you don't get to talk to me he then ends up getting several of the leaders including green lantern to come down from his like emerald tower so that they could reform the justice league now, after we get the league together, we see Wonder Woman in absolute manipulation mode. She doesn't tell Superman that she has been stripped of her title and exiled from uh, the mascara. She tries to manipulate Aquaman into letting her use his prison to imprison these people, and then she almost in like she almost kills one of them, um, and basically is like trying to get Superman to adopt this war mentality because she's saying that that's the only thing that they understand is is fucking fighting. So we need to do that, and he doesn't want to do that he thinks that educating them is the best thing so after superman finds out that she has been exiled and stripped of her title they go and they're talking they almost kiss of course which is another part of her manipulation when it comes to him and uh 
some of the heroes come in to tell them that they found Magog, who has who was in Kansas, uh, trying to like fix up everything that he destroyed. They confront him, and Superman's like, you know, I'm not afraid of you, and he's like, please. All of that stuff happened, and it was your fault. It was your fault that Lois died because you stopped on the street to do whatever the hell, um, and then you ended up leaving. I was trying to be the new number one, and I challenged you for that, and you left. And you were a coward and you just decided to leave he then attacks diana kind of just keeps everybody back um magog then attacks superman and then he kind of just like has like a breakdown he's like you know what just lock me up because it's not even worth it anymore i don't want to be the man of tomorrow because this is bullshit <laughs> Prior to that, they're at the UN talking and they basically have like this dictator statement that you either join us or you will be dealt with type thing. And eh, then he ends up bu building the gulag, which is the super prison that he wanted to keep these people in that he didn't really want, but Diana very much con like convinced him to get it. This leads us to the third, which is what we're going to call False Hope. And in this one, uh, prior to, we were introduced to Lex Luthor's group of people known as the Mankind Liberation Front, and he has kind of a secret weapon. At some point, uh, going into book three, uh, Batman and his team of people end up joining the MLF. At this point, after building the Gulag, it is filled to capacity, and they are basically saying like, this is ridiculous like all of your moral codes and everything that you live by is completely outdated like these villains who are killing people need to be like dealt with properly and prison is not the answer um and while they're in the gulag even though it is supposed to be for education and all that stuff they can be attacked at any time by any of the heroes who are monitoring them and it was of course built by mr miracle everything is boiling over tensions are high and Batman is trying to kind of like navigate what's going on with Lex Luthor and his secret weapon. So mind you, he has kind of just like this handsome guy that's just there. And if you know Shazam at all, then you know that that's who that is. Like it's Billy Batson. But Bruce Wayne didn't know that. So he used Martian Manhunter to kind of just like do a brain probe. They figured out it was Billy Batson and he betrayed Lex Luthor. And Billy Batson ended up like freaking out, running away and going and blowing a hole in the gulag. Wonder Woman had been spending a lot of time in this book trying to get Superman to realize that he is a world leader and that he needs to take the reins. Otherwise, the reins would be taken from him and the Justice League would be just taking things into their own hands. Um, we also have Flash pulling uh Norman away from the Spectre and into the actual physical plane that they are in to try to like warn them but they find out that a riot has happened and one of the guards who was there is killed by them and just a lot of things going on so Wonder Woman immediately arms herself for war and gets the Justice League to follow her because Superman's not going to do it and he's not liking this whole war mentality even though he ended up adopting it and basically was like having prisoners of war without having having prisoners of war well now war has come to them and he is just not happy about that so he doesn't really do anything except let diana go but he does try when he uh figures out from batman that it is shazam uh that is headed that way or that was the person that did it and all, with all that stuff he is immediately gone he's immediately there and that leads us into our fourth and final, which I'm going to call Paradise Lost. So um, in this situation, there is all out war between the Justice League, um, Batman's crew ends up showing up to assist, and the heroes that had been locked up by Superman and all of them. And it's just all out war everywhere. Wonder Woman kills one of them. And it just causes even more chaos. And then she ends up going up against Bruce Wayne um, in his bat suit. And instead, uh, like she tries to like kind of like manipulate him. And of course, him being as petty as he's been, he like triggers her and she tries to kill him instead. But you know, they fly up, have this like little conversation, and there are three nukes that the government sent uh, to take care of them. They were able to get two. Uh, during this entire time, Shazam is beating Superman's ass, okay? And so he finally gets a hold of Shazam and makes him turn back into Billy Batson and tells him, you have a choice. Um, you can let me stop this and all this stuff keeps happening or um, we can just let this, like, everybody die 
type shit besides me and you and then we can handle it later so of course he goes to superman goes to try to stop the nuke but he's grabbed by shazam who is turned back into shazam and he sacrifices himself to take the nuke out which superman gets mad at and um goes off on the government and then they're all just like hey like you know <laughs> you can't let them see you like this they will never forget this and so norman was able to talk superman down and then he was like you know we're going to educate them we're going to come back we're gonna like we have to work together to do this because otherwise it's not going to work essentially that is the gist of the story now what are my thoughts as it pertains to you first of all wonder woman was master manipulator from book one from from the from the jump she knew that she didn't have her title and she knew that she was like banished from the mascara and she tried to use everything that she could to get superman to adopt the same mentality as her to put these younger generation people out of the way so that she could do her job as wonder woman and bring peace to man's world and it was not working the way that she wanted because superman was not adopting like what she needed him to adopt and so that's why she ended up when all of the stuff happened at the gulag she ended up becoming the ipso facto leader of the justice league and sending them to war because they were ready they were ready to go to war and superman was literally the one holding them back and they had they were basically just like we're tired of them like they gotta go and they were literally adopting the exact same mentality as Wonder Woman. And I feel like that is exactly the mentality that the younger generation was adopting anyway, was Wonder Woman's mentality because it was fight all the time for her. She, out of the two, out of the three of them, she is the one that really does not have a problem killing anybody. She tried once and was stopped by Superman. And then she succeeded when she did it again but she wasn't able to kill batman because of course batman is her friend one person she was not able to manipulate was aquaman and i think that that was really great because aquaman was not trying to he was like i'm not trying to get involved in none of that the situation between batman and superman that was a great like back and forth with them because batman um while he was just acting as bruce wayne he was reminding clark that humanity is still in you and like i said before i'm not about to change how what i talk how i talk to you or what i call you because you decided to be mad i stayed you didn't that whole situation was everybody's fault superman's fault for sure for stopping to do whatever happened to do with a random citizen and batman's fault for sure because there's absolutely no reason that the joker should have made it out of gotham city to metropolis to murder all of these people if he had to just handled it like he should have when superman was angry that they acquitted magog it's like humans are tired of being murdered so 100 percent when it comes to manipulation Batman was also in that manipulation suits. He was doing what he needed to do uh, because he heard that the MLF had this plan, but he couldn't just discern the plan sitting in the Batcave. So he decided to manipulate Lex Luthor so that he could figure out what is this? So then he ended up bringing in his own group of youth heroes. He ended up bringing in Black Canary and Green Arrow. He ended up um, bringing in Martian Manhunter. He needed Martian Manhunter to do like a probe on this young boy that's been hanging around with Lex Luthor only to discover that it was Billy Batson. And while he did try to save Billy Batson, it only ended up making it worse. But I mean, nothing that batman said through the entire series was wrong he was not wrong about anything he basically said we had a responsibility to these people and because you know what they said is correct they are tired of being killed and that was on us but there are ways to fix that and get around it and instead of trying to work with humanity to figure out what could we do you left you walked away for 10 years you walked away and now you're coming back saying that you really don't have that darker side but you've changed your emblem your emblem includes black now and you are saying like all of these things and you just you sound like a dictator you sound like you came back 
to rule over these people and not assist these people. Batman, and y'all know how I feel about Batman. Batman being my favorite character in this entire like the this whole four series just was a shock to me but Batman was not wrong Bruce was not wrong he's also hilarious um at the end of it when everything is said and done and he's established like this hospital um he, he walks past Lex Luthor and goes just like whispers Shazam and Lex is like shut up like he just he had that humor and i 100 percent appreciated it it was fun to read fun to watch it when it came to bruce wayne now on the subject of superman this could be the best and worst version of superman in my opinion i felt like magog was correct he was a coward um and he was also called coward by bruce wayne as well um because you left for 10 years and so my thing my th my thing here with this, this version of superman is you came back talking about you wanted to educate these young heroes and you wanted to guide them but you failed in doing that the first time magog was boy thunder they've retconned that to where that is boy thunder and he grows up to be magog and that means that he has lived your philosophy your moral code and he still decided that you were wrong because you are risking the lives of humanity because you don't want to do what needs to be done when it comes to these villains who are actively killing people and then you're upset with humanity because they've decided that they need people who are ready to actually defend humanity not just throw these super powered people in jail and leave it at that because they can escape at any time the joker hello they wanted a champion that was able to do that and it was like superman was not willing to come out of his ways and when he did come out of his ways at the manipulation and persistence of diana he went back into his ways where at this point in time like you adopted the war mentality for all of like five minutes and then immediately we're like actually i don't think we should do that maybe you should maybe you should just a little bit because they are not you're not explaining anything to them you're just repeating yourself you're throwing out this old 1950s candor like you're not giving them any substance and they're younger generation they're a younger generation so if you're trying to do that you need to allow them to express to you how they feel things should go and then how you feel things should go so that y'all could come to a conclusion in how things should be going when you are superheroes saying we have rules and you need to follow them you don't really have rules. You created rules for yourself to, you know, have some self-control, but you don't really have any established rules as a hero. And that's something that needed to be done and you went about it absolutely wrong. Another thing is when it comes to Magog. Um, so two times fear is mentioned and <laughs> I think that he was just experiencing a fear of failure so where fear is mentioned he immediately goes to a physical fear of magog he's like i'm not afraid of him i'm not afraid of you but it wasn't implied that you were but it was implied that you were afraid of what magog represented which was humanity's decision and humanity did not choose you that is what you were afraid of and for you to continuously bring up a physical fear of Magog, you don't have to be physically afraid of him. You're just afraid of what it is that he represented, which then it sounds like you are physically afraid of him because two times you chose not to fight him. I mean, even if you felt like you would hurt him in some way, shape or form, he was your protege at one time. So he knows how to fight you. So whether or not he's outmatched, whether or not you're outmatched, when he attacks you, the second time that y'all have this meetup you still don't do anything and essentially you're trying to just like manipulate him into thinking you know everything that he's done he should be proud of he was never proud of it but he did want more from you as a mentor and you refused to give it you refused to you refused the challenge which i don't even think that he really wanted to physically challenge superman i think he just wanted to he wanted to be the new number one of course but you know i need to show you that what you've got going on is outdated but then you go and you manipulate whether you did it on purpose or accident you manipulated billy batson into sacrificing himself and then got mad because he sacrificed himself and i think that that was the crime 
that uh, Norman had when he had the vision of Superman, the crime of an indirect murder. He's not the one who threw Shazam into the nuke. He did kind of guide him into that direction, in which case Billy Batson sacrificed himself and ended up dying. And then he tried to use that as like this big, huge spectacle and be like, he represents the best of us. He was both man and he was he was a god. And we really just kind of need to come together under his sacrifice. And that would not have happened if you were the one to sacrifice yourself. And I think you knew that. And I think Diana definitely knew that. So she does end up getting her crown and her title and everything back and she's not exiled anymore because now there is peace. Um, and I think that that to me is what makes her the bad guy in the situation because she wanted her stuff back. She wanted her title back. She wanted to be back on the island with her mother. Her mother is the one who decided that she was not worthy of anything. And she was like, I have to get my stuff back. How do I do this? Because when when he when he first told her to go back to the mascara because she would be safe there, she just leaves. She doesn't say anything or anything like that. She's not about to argue. She just leaves. But she comes back super hard and is like, I need you to do this. And then when we find out that, you know, he did not know any of this stuff, but Batman somehow knew. And Batman's like, didn't you get stripped of all of this stuff? What happened? And she was just like, it, you don't get to judge me but he does he does get to judge you because he is the only sane person in this situation right now because between superman being manipulated by you and you wanting power back bruce wayne is the only one with his brain that's actually thinking about humanity and while Superman was under the guise of thinking about humanity, he wasn't really thinking about humanity. He was really just kind of thinking of, how can I prove to these people that I deserve to still be here, that I still deserve to be like their champion? So one of the things that I really did enjoy about this was Norman's role. And he wasn't just the narrator. Um, again, he did get pulled out of like the supernatural plane he was in, brought into like the world of the living basically <laughs> by the Flash. Um, and definitely the Justice League was on 10 because Power Girl was about to beat this man to death um, before he even got a chance to answer the question. Uh, Superman was ready to kind of hear the explanation, but when he started trying to explain it, it's just a jumbled mess. He didn't really know the words to say, and Superman was like, nah, what? And he didn't really have like an inkling of believing this person until the stuff happened at the Gulag, and then the Spectre pulled him back into uh, the plane of existence that they were on, and everybody was like, whatever, like what, whatever the hell that was. But it did take Norman to talk Superman down. It took somebody who, um, and there's a lot of faith talk. Um, he is a pastor. So it took him taking like a leap of faith and being like the representative of humanity and being like, it's not that we don't need you because we do, but we all have to figure out how we do this together and not the way that you've been doing it separate from the way that they've been doing it, but together. And this tantrum that you're throwing right now, they see you, they will not forgive you for this, they will not forget this if you continue to do what you're doing because it is like their exact fear coming from you. And Bruce Wayne was just like, you know, <laughs> like I get it, I get where you're going, but like it could just end up being more of the same thing. So like we have to figure out how to do this together to where it makes sense you know what i'm saying so i did appreciate that in norman not just being a narrator and all of that did culminate into everything going in a much safer direction uh when it came to everybody's role so of course diana got what she wanted what she was trying to get the whole book or the whole series bruce wayne turning in being batman to like helping these people heal because you know he's aware of the damage that he's caused as well and 
it took this to get them to where they just had to see that humanity isn't as weak as they try to make it seem but humanity does deserve a say in how they perceive like heroes and how they think that they should be saved they should not have to continue to be killed by these super villains these super villains need to be checked and the superheroes that are checking them also need to be checked so it just kind of needs to be a balance now that i've explained it all to you and given you my opinion on these matters it is definitely up to you if you think that this is the medication for you because with all of the doses the side effects and the fact that it could lead you to the exact same conclusion that humanity and those who have superpowers just need to be balanced and it doesn't and they need to check each other one doesn't need to rule over each other they need to work together so i highly suggest taking this medication it's probably one of the highest doses of medication that you could take coming from the dc comics pharmacy um, but that is just my opinion as you were comics doctor uh so thank you again for coming to the doctor's office you let me know if this is the medication for you and we will see you again for a different checkup bye